Now that we've completed part one, let's turn our attention to calculating the density of liquid ethanol. Now, as a reminder, this is different from part one. In part one, we calculate the density of a solid and has nothing to do with part two. So let's fo first focus on calculating the density of our sample of ethanol, and then we'll discuss how we're going to pool our data together to calculate the average density of ethanol using a graphing program. This step is actually relatively simple. Your teacher, before you enter lab, is going to assign each group with a specific volume of ethanol to use. Your task is just to record the mass of that ethanol sample and the volume of that ethanol sample. Keep in mind that your teacher may not give you exactly 2.0, 2.5, etc. Uh, milliliters of ethanol, so it's important that you record your exact amount. At this point, let's go into the lab and get a little more instruction on how this step works. Uh, then we will come back and discuss how we will access the average density of ethanol using the graphing approach. Now we're going to transition to part two of the lab, where we will find the density of liquid ethanol. Our first step is to tear the top loading balance. Grab one of the smaller graduated cylinders from the cart and head over to the balance. We're going to actually take a measurement of the empty cylinder first, so when we later add the liquid ethanol, the scale will only display the mass of the liquid by itself without the cylinder and everything. This is called tearing. Tearing lets us measure one specific thing, like the liquid ethanol, without worrying about how much the cylinder itself weighs. To tear, turn on the scale, place the empty cylinder on it, and then press the tear button. The scale should now read zero because the mass of the empty cylinder has been subtracted. Leave one partner at the scale to make sure no one else zeroes out your tearing while the other person heads over to the hood to get the liquid ethanol from your teacher. You should have been assigned a specific volume of liquid ethanol to collect. Once your teacher gives you your sample, head back over to your teared scale and place the cylinder with the sample on the scale. The number displayed is the mass of the liquid sample only. By tearing, the scale already subtracted the mass of the empty cylinder. Our next step is to double check the volume your teacher gave you. It's okay if it's not exactly what you were supposed to get. Write down the volume to the nearest tenth of a milliliter. In this case, our teacher gave us exactly 4.0 milliliters. That's it for this lab. Listen to your teacher on how to clean up. Good luck, guys. Thanks, Carter. Let's review the calculations and our goals for this part of the lab. The first thing that we will ask you to do is to calculate the density of your sample of ethanol. This is the sample that your teacher measured out for you. You will take the mass and divide it by the volume. Should be relatively straightforward. More importantly, we know that we can get a much more accurate answer by averaging all the densities that your classmates calculated. Now, we're actually not going to take the densities, sum them up, and divide by the total sample size to calculate the average. Instead, we're going to use a graphical approach using Excel or numbers, and it's important that you understand what we're doing here. The first thing that you need to do is put your values for mass and volume up on the board. Your classmates will do the same, and you must record this before you leave the lab. From there, you will plug this information into Excel or Numbers. Now, for those of you who don't know how to use this program, we have provided a video tutorial in the lab module section that covers everything we will discuss shortly. Let's discuss a little bit of mathematics and talk about how it relates to the density equation. We know that the equation of a straight line is y is equal to mx plus b. Here I'm using k for slope so it doesn't confuse you with m for mass. Now, notice if the y-intercept is equal to zero, this equation becomes y is equal to kx. Keep this in mind as we now focus on the density equation. We know that density is mass divided by volume, or m over v. Multiplying both sides by v, and you can imagine uh, I, I'm doing it here, but I haven't explicitly shown it, we see that density times volume is equal to mass. Let's flip this around and say that mass is equal to density times volume and add a zero to it. Remember, we can add zero. It doesn't change either side of the equation. Notice the uh, correlation here between the equation of a straight line with intercept zero and the density equation, albeit slightly rearranged. And this is our key relationship for the lab. We see that this equation tells us that the relationship between mass and volume is linear with a slope equal to density. 
So if we plot volume on the x-axis, and you can sort of imagine volume taking the spot of the x variable here, and mass on the y-axis, and you can imagine mass taking the spot of the y variable here, the slope will be equal to the density. So what we will do is plot our data with volume on the x-axis and mass on the y-axis and create a line of best fit. The slope of the line of best fit will be equal to the average density. And this is the key relationship for this lab. This is the key thing that you need to focus on. We are not summing up all the densities and taking the average of the density directly. We are plotting volume versus mass. The slope of the line of best fit will be equal to the density. That is the key, key feature of this lab and what you need to learn from this video. Now that we know how to access the density, let's review a couple features of Excel or numbers. Here I'm using Excel because that's what I'm more comfortable with, but numbers is very similar. Again, we know from the equation that mass is equal to density times volume, plus zero, or in other words, an intercept of zero. What this means is if we plug uh, volume on the x-axis and mass on the y-axis, the slope of the line of best fit will be equal to the density, and that's what we're looking for. I've created a test set, it has nothing to do with ethanol, of these four data points. Now, using Excel, you can add a trend line that best approximates the linear relationship between this data set. This is also covered in the Excel tutorial that's available in the lab module. More importantly, you need to show the equation of the line of best fit to your reader. A couple things about this uh, line. There's an option to add R squared. Um, R squared is a fancy term, but basically it tells us how close to a straight line this data set is. Ideally, you want this to be 1. A R squared value of 1 indicates a perfectly linear relationship. 0.93 is okay, but not great. And you can see that this data point here might be an outlier, and that might be the reason why this line uh, doesn't have an R squared value closer to 1. Now, this uh, equation of the line of best fit is usually spit out by the graphing program as y uh, is equal to the slope times x plus the intercept. I've replaced y here with m for mass and x with volume because I think that's more descriptive for my reader. I think they can easily, uh, <clears throat> I think they can more easily see that uh, the y variable here is mass and the x variable here is volume if I explicitly write it. Now keep in mind that every graph should have uh, your axes labeled, and that's something that you definitely want to do, as well in a, as an appropriate title. Density Lab would not be a good title for this graph. You want to describe to your reader what you're actually doing, so maybe something like calculating the average density of ethanol. Now, you also have to be able to recognize what the average density of ethanol is. And remember, we said it's the slope of the line of best fit. Um, so here, we can immediately read off the slope from our line, so it should be about 0.59 to two significant figures, grams per milliliter, and that would reflect the average density of this liquid. Again, it's not necessarily ethanol, I just made up this data set. As a final note, your teacher may ask you to set this y-intercept equal to zero on the line of best fit. Be sure to check with him or her. Now, here are the calculations that you need to do for homework. For part one, you will calculate the density of the solid to the appropriate number of significant figures. For part two, you will calculate the density of ethanol uh, to the appropriate number of significant figures. This reflects your sample of ethanol, so the mass and the volume, so you want to take a look at that calculation. Then you will graph the class data on Excel, and you want to include the line of best fit, the equation of the line, um, the R squared value, and label your axes. Again, if you don't know how to do this, there's an Excel tutorial available. Uh, and finally, use your graph to determine the average uh, density of ethanol, and that's just reading the slope and reporting it to your reader. Good luck.